That looks good. What's that? It's wine unknown. Welcome to Wine Unknown. I'm your host. My name is Brian Fennell, also known as Bright Guy, and I'm a wine specialist. What does that even mean? Well, it means that I know a lot of information about wine, and I want to share that along with my passion with you guys. So no matter where you're at in your journey, no matter if it's the beginning, the middle, well, let's face it, there's no such thing as the end. This is the show for you. So when you think about wine, you literally only think about two things. You think about the grape and the wine itself. But there's so much to it. There's so many people involved. There's a history, land. Oh my gosh, it's just a lot. We're going to talk about two terms, viticulture and viniculture. What are they? Well, let's check it out. (laughs) Why am I laughing? I'm laughing for the sheer fact that viticulture and viniculture are so influential and so important to making wine that, oh my goodness, how am I supposed, where do you even begin? I don't even know, but I'm going to try my best, okay? All right, so viticulture is the agricultural side of wine. It's the grape growing lane. It's, it's. Oh, oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Anything that happens in the vineyard, anything that's associated with the vineyard is viticulture. Viniculture is the winemaking side of wine. It's the art. It's the art of the science of making wine. Anything that turn that helps or influences turning the grape juice into wine that's Viniculture and all of that stuff is happening in the winery. I got it. That's easy. That's easy. Easy. Right. Viniculture equals vineyard. Viniculture equals winery. Boom. Now, why is this important? It's important because a lot of viticultural things begins before the actual grapevine itself. It's this thing called terroir or everything that will influence the vine. That's what terroir essentially is. Terroir used to scare me because it was so overwhelming that I could not understand what it actually meant, what it was until I got it. And it's just like, oh, whoa, okay, all right, I get it now. So when you hear terroir, terroir is anything in the environment that will influence the grapevine. So we're thinking of soil. We're thinking of sun exposure. We're thinking of climate, weather, temperature, fog, anything. (laughs) Anything that's the environment that will affect or potentially affect the grapevine itself. That's terroir. Now, why is that even important? And how does that influence the grapevine? And how is that even before the actual grape growing itself? Well, there's a couple reasons. All right, so soil is important for the sheer fact that what kind of soil is it? Because every vine won't work or showcase its best in certain soils so if you have something that's like really loose soils that means it's not going to retain a lot of water and a lot of grapes like that they the less water the better they are because they need that struggle but there are other grapes that work really good with soils that retain a lot of water like i could just say like merlot merlot works really well in soils that retain water because now you feel like you're really nourished you know like merlot has that great structure from being really nourished and i think that's pretty cool now sunlight exposure sunlight is exposure for the sheer fact that it makes sure that grapes ripen and that's what you want you need you need your grapes or whatever kind of produce to ripen so it needs sunlight 
without that, you're just going to have a lot of grapes with high acidity, with a lot of acidity. And so that's kind of just like you need sugar and acid to balance out to make a really good wine. Now, climate and weather. I didn't even know those were different things. Yes, they are different things. Climate is the average weather a place usually gets. Weather is the actual condition being experienced. Like, weather weather for today where I'm at, it's raining right now. But usually it doesn't start raining until like the middle of this month. That's 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 the easiest way to like kind of sum that up. Right. Like so climate is just like the historical like patterns of whatever, like how the weather was during this time. Weather is the actual thing that's happening in that moment. Like you can feel it. Temperature, temperature is really important for balancing out the grapes. Because if you have nice, hot, warm temperature, then your grapes are going to get a lot of sugar or enough sugar. If it's usually cool or cold, then you're going to have a lot more acidity. So that's so those are these are all kind of things that you want to think about when you're thinking about viticulture before you're even planting or whatever kind of grapevines you do have because now you're starting to understand okay all right so if this is how it usually is maybe I can do this to the grapevines now that's when it goes into more so like um vineyard design like how do you want the rows on the vineyard to look are they all going to be straight across or do you want to have some sideways so then it's, you start getting a little bit crafty with okay all right so if it's going like that there it's not really working out so what if we replant them in a different angle it's all kind of, oh or what if i need to have have them trellised this way in this plot uh in this plot of land and have them trellis this way trellis is um a post it's just like the the support of how you want the vine to grow so some of them usually are just like vertical and then you see it's like a fence and you see the vine grow up the vent grow up the post now as far as the grape growing itself there's only one thing to really understand and that there's a yearly growth cycle of the vine You only get one shot per year dealing with the grapes. So there are four seasons we're dealing with. We're dealing with winter, spring, summer, and fall or autumn. However you want to say, whichever one you want to use, right? So let's start off with the winter time. What's happening with the vines during the winter? They're sleeping. They're in hibernation mode. They're like, all right, I've just done a lot for the three previous seasons and now I deserve a rest. So that's what's happening in the wintertime with the vines. But soon as the spring hits, there are a couple of major things that's going to happen, right? So the first thing that you'll notice in the spring are that the vines are going to start to grow buds and leaves like little like like little buds and leaves. They're not like fully blown. No, no, no. It's 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 still just like a baby. Right. Then after the after that. It's going to start flowering. Now, this is when you start seeing like sprouting. Like, I don't like I don't know if you ever remember from elementary school when you put a seed into did the project of putting the seed into like soil and then you seen it poke its head out and then you start seeing like the stem. So this is it's all of this is happening. So you're reliving that moment. OK, so we're still into spring. We're in a couple weeks in the spring. And what you're going to see happen is the vines are going to start growing fruit. They're going to you're going to start seeing like little berries going off. And you're just like, whoa, 
This is when it's becoming a stressful little juggling act in this moment because everything is going to start moving so much more quicker. And now you will have to monitor the development of the grapes multiple times a day because all of the other influences like the terroir that we mentioned earlier in the box. Because I don't know if you ever noticed, but if you ever leave the house before the sun uh, rises in the morning time, you notice like the grass or plants, they're all leaning, they're all laying down. It's like they're sleeping. And at throughout the course of the day, even a couple hours, you start seeing them stick straight up and like they're like they look totally different. They're more vibrant. All it takes is a couple of hours, if even that, for you to see a huge change in the greenery all around. And th- this is a this is even more pivotal within the vineyard because while all this is happening you still have to look out for like wild animals you have to see how, now all right the, those grapes were so small at 5 a.m and now at noon they've gotten a lot bigger so you have to always monitor that because you want to make sure that you know exactly what's going on with this fruit at all times Now, while that's still going on, you still have to maintain the vines and the grapes. So you will have to constantly trim off extra leaves, branches, and make sure that they're growing healthy on the trellis or the post that we mentioned earlier. Just think of it like getting a manicure, pedicure, or going to the spa. This will happen all summer. Now that we're here, let's talk about the summertime. The summertime is when the temperatures are usually at its highest. You get longer days, which means there's more sunlight that's being exposed to the grapevine. So they're getting a whole lot of sugar or ripening a whole lot. So you're going to have to monitor this. Not only that, the temperature is really important because what if it doesn't cool down cool enough to have enough acidity? You have to always be on point and understanding what's happening within the terroir throughout the summertime. And also, you might not get as much rain, which is going to not be good, or it could be good depending on whatever kind of grape or uh, wine style you're trying to produce. But these are all things that you always have to be mindful of. That's why all of this becomes really stressful. <laughs> The summertime is really uh, an important moment within the yearly harvest because it can make up for a lot of things that didn't happen early on in the spring or potentially that might not happen in the fall that you needed to. So this is a this is the moment where it could be a lot a good cushion. This could be a good safety net or it could hurt you depending on what you're going for, whatever the winemaker is going for. And hello fall. All right, so when we hit early fall, this is when it's time to harvest in general. This is when it's time to cut the grapes from the vines and take them to the winery to become wine eventually. After the grapes are cut, the vines go back to sleep until spring and the vineyard gets maintenance by getting rid of all the excess things from the vines in general. It's just like a, this is when they're just doing cleanup now because they're, we're not going to be using the vineyard until spring, pretty much. So let's just do all of our little cleanup. And that's the cycle for the grape growing process that we call viticulture. Now we step into the world of viniculture where things happen at the winery at the harvest. Now this is just in general, not every place is going to do this. So this varies a lot. In general, once the grapes hit the winery after harvest, they go they go through a sorting table which is pretty much people just discarding the grapes that's not usable from the grapes that are usable. So the grapes fall into this little machinery called a destemmer. 
also known as a crusher as well. But what that does is that separates the grapes from the stems. And then it goes into crushing and then pressing. Pressing is when the grapes are in this machine and it literally just squeezes the grapes so the juice can run into wherever they're going to store them. Then after that becomes the fermentation process. And that's all up to the head winemaker's philosophy of the art and science of making wine. And that's just viticulture in a nutshell. It can go a lot deeper, but we'll go into that later episodes. All right. Thank you for checking out this episode of Wine Unknown. I'm your host, Brian Fennell, also known as Rye Guy. And if you did like this episode, please like, share, subscribe, comment. You can always do that on any of the DSPs. Wherever you're listening to this, please do that. Share with your friends. Let them know that you've learned something. Also, if you do have a question that you'd like to get answered by me about wine please shoot me over an email at askbrightguy at gmail.com or you can just click the link it'll take you to the website where you can just leave me a voicemail all right cheers until next time